ahead. You all set one. Uh, small envelope. Get on record. <laughs> You're welcome. Might be a good Okay. Good evening. I'd like to call to order the January 23rd, 2014 regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District. Start with roll call. Dave Nelson. Here. Charles Anderson. Here. Nick Rico. Here. Ben Viola. Here. Rob McSorley. I am here. Seth Garrison. Here. And I am Chairman Jason Greenleaf. Just order of business approval of the minutes for the December 19, 2013 regular monthly so meeting. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Seconded. Any errors or omissions? No, I did not find any. Rob's laughing. Nothing? Nothing. All right. No Both errors or omissions. Winning. All in favor of approval? Aye. Abstaining. Mr. Garrison has abstained because he was not present at the last meeting. Next order of business is the superintendent and operations report. Dave? A copy of the uh, monthly report of operations for the month of December is included in the packet. Our effort quality was low within our permitted limits for all parameters. 94 and 96 percent removal for BOD and TSS uh, with average concentrations of 16 and 12 milligrams per liter. Uh, We've inclu I've included a, the annual summary of our operations. Last year we treated a total of 429.5 million gallons of wastewater. As compared to last, uh, the year before 2012, we treated 431 million gallons. Uh, over that period of time, we, we removed 95 and 97% of BOD and TSS on average over the, over the year. Attaches the annual solid waste uh, compost report. Last year we generated 3,044 cubic yards of compost. In 2012, we generated 3,392 cubic yards. Uh, a copy of the pump station flows for the month of December is included in your report. No issues were identified. On December 13th, Carl. Uh, Jan Jandro of 183 Pine Point Road reported that he had significant sewer odors outside of his house around his back deck. He did state that he had no odors inside the house. Upon review, it appears that he was getting a downdraft from his vent pipe, which is located just above his deck. I suggest two options, one being installing an air admittance valve, such as a Studer Maxi vent, and or extending his vent pipe up a couple of feet. Uh, attached is the uh, 2013 pump station pump plug history report. The, this past year, there were a total of 12 events of plug pumps at our pump stations as compared to 20 of eight events last year. Uh, only three events were due to disposable wipes. In 2012, the majority of the plug pumps occurred at just two of the uh, Two of our 23 pump stations, Pump Station 3, which is Dunstan Landing, had 11 plugs in 2012, and Pump Station 20, Evergreen Farms, had 13 plugs. This, uh, this past year, Pump Station 13 only had three events, and Pump Station 20 was down to just one event. I, I do plan, um, those two pump stations are serviced by um, um, elderly care facilities, and, and uh, I, uh, at the end of 2012, I did meet with them to discuss the problems that we have, and uh, they obviously did grow, uh, make great strides in addressing the issue, and I do plan on um, going back and visiting with them and, and thanking them on their efforts on that. On that note, on, uh, there was a uh, press conference on January 21st that was held by Maine Wastewater Control Association to address the issues of uh, baby wipes. In attendance were many representatives within the wastewater community, including Commissioner Aho and myself, um, to drive home the importance of this issue. After the conference, a tour of Portland Water District's Cottage Street pump station was given. I've, I've provided tonight a copy of the uh, flyer that they have put together as a result of that, this program. Um, it's, it's been dubbed Save Save Your Pipes program, uh, Don't Flush Baby Wipes, and you'll be seeing that 
uh, in many areas, including Hannaford Supermarket. Uh, sewer rates, we had one gentleman who came to the plant this past week to pay his bill and stated that he thought our sewer rates were too low. Uh, being unusual, uh, I thought it would be nice to pass that on. We were taken back by it. Uh, we have installed the Penn Valley uh, pump um, for our sludge pump uh, pilot test purposes. Uh, it is now up and running. Uh, it was started up uh, Wednesday of this week. Old Orchard Beach uh, Wastewater Treatment Facility, on recommendations from DEP, uh, their staff reached out to Glenn to discuss some operational issues that they had been experiencing. They came to review our operations in Scarborough here, and then Glenn and I visited their plant to review theirs. Both Glenn and I had some suggestions that they, were going, that they are going to implement, including utilizing Dr. Richard to conduct microbiological examinations. Carl and Paul um, this past month cleaned the check valves as part of their yearly PM maintenance at pump station six, during which they noticed cavitation damage on the pump and impellers. It is likely that we will need to replace these impellers next year. Before you go on, which one's pump station six? Old Beck Road. Okay. The big one. Uh, our hot CL17 chlorine analyzer, which we purchased about a year and a half ago, uh, the colorimeter has failed four times on this unit in, the, in that time frame. Um, I contacted Hawk and, and they have since replaced that unit at no cost to the district. Um, the following items are now in front of the planning board and will likely come in front of the district soon. Uh, Waterstone Retail requests a sketch plan review of a 113 square foot um, uh, uh, retail space, including three buildings, and it's going to be a multi-tenant project at 700 Gallery Boulevard. Griffin Road Development requests sketch plan review for a 36-unit senior housing facility at the end of Griffin Road, and Sawgrass Subdivisions uh, Star Homes Incorporated requests preliminary sub subdivision review for a 23-lot subdivision off Square Road. Each one of these projects will be served by um, sewer. That is all I have. All right. Thank you very much, Dave. Any questions for the superintendent? I have a quick question. Uh, the impellers, the cavitation, what was the source of the cavitation on the impellers? Did you, were you able to track that down? We haven't tracked that down yet. We just noticed it this past week. Nick, you had a question? Yes, following up on that point, um, What's the age of these pumps? So they were installed about seven, eight years ago? About eight years ago, yeah. They making noise? No. No excessive noise. Just normal wear and tear. Um, I also had a question about the man who <coughs> thought the rates were too low. Do you think he'd be willing to go and do some commercials for? No. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions? It's like none. I, I just wanted to point out and maybe ask, pose the question, um, very good promotional campaign that they're doing as far as baby wipes go, but it's not just baby wipes that are affected, right? I mean, they're using baby wipes, I know, is a, probably yeah. the majority of the issue, but it includes uh, Clorox wipes and, and other... Swiffers. And yeah, yeah all, all, a lot of these... Um, materials like baby wipes uh, are a major source of problems. This program, um, uh, public campaign, has kind of been negotiated to focus on just the baby wipes piece of it. I understand. I just want to make sure our listening public would understand that there are other reasons for clogging pump stations and cost uh, the district a lot of money. So. Um, Baby wife certainly a, one of the uh, heavy hitters there, but there's also the uh, Clorox wipes and things that people use to wipe down countertops and, and other items that uh, do cause problems as well. And I'm sure that they're going in the trash. We certainly would appreciate it. And the kudos to you, Dave, as far as pump station clogging goes with the, uh, you know, the education that you've done at the 
area facilities. I think that's gone a long ways and has direct relation to why we see fewer instances here in the last year. Great job. If there's nothing else for the superintendent, we'll move on to correspondence. And we have three items of correspondence this evening. Uh, GEP sent the attached letter dated October 9, 2013 with regard to BOD and TSS percent removal requirements. Um, it was sent to all uh, publicly owned treatment works regarding a change in the standard language with regard to percent removal. DEP had previously written into the license a waiver of the 85% removal requirement when insulin concentrations were less than 200 milligrams per liter. EPA has advised them that this waiver can only be applied if the facility demonstrates and meets certain criteria as described in the attached letter. With regard to Scarborough Sanitary District, this change in the la la language will have little impact. As shown in the attached annual lab report, our average removals was 95 and 96% removal of DOD TSS uh, with monthly average influent concentrations above 200 milligrams per liter. And item B, the second item, is, uh, is that a continuation of that? or nope. second? Okay. CEP, December 16th. Thank you. Um, on December 16th, uh, DEP sent us a letter with regards to a, a sanitary sewer cross connection at Mariner's Cove. DEP wanted the district to take measures to prevent such an occurrence in the future. With that, working with the staff, we developed the attached protocol to be used during the inspection of sanitary sewer service connections. Since submitting this document to DEP, DEP has asked if they could use this protocol as an example for other communities to follow. And great job with that, by the way, uh, putting that together. I understand it got, uh, got some uh, notice. That up. Great. And the third item, of course, on its face, Bofford and Thorndike. Uh, dated December 30th, 2013, it's regards to the Pleasant Hill survey plan. The town is considering some roadway improvements to the Pleasant Hill uh, between Route 1 and Highland Ave. In the attached weather, we were asked to check their survey to ensure our infrastructure was shown correctly. Our infrastructure was correctly, accurately shown. However, there were some private sewers that were not shown near Route 1. I have already provided this documentation to FST. Any questions or comments on the correspondence? Yeah, just uh, that the private sewers lines there, was that the pressure sewer from what was originally Southworth Milton? Uh, yes. Yeah. Any others? Anything else? We'll move on to old business. There is none. Uh, before we move on to, well, as we move on to new business, uh, we do have an item to add to the agenda. I'd entertain a motion to add under new business the key total treasury. Motion to add that to the second new agenda. Uh, second. Any questions about that? If not, all in favor of adding that to the agenda? None opposed. We'll add that as letter C for the third item. Mr. Chairman, before we proceed, uh, I should note that uh, I have a conflict of interest as my permit representing the next item, and I should recruit myself in the direction. Okay. Thank you, Rob. So the first item under new business is Lot 12, the Scarborough Industrial Park, 21 Washington Ave. On behalf of 21 Washington Ave, Tobago Technics is requesting district approval to connect to the sewer a proposed 5,184 square foot building addition to an existing 5,000 square foot building that is already connected to the sewer. The space will be used as warehouse space for contractors as described in the attached letter and shown on the attached plan. Uh, the addition would be served via a new, um, a new sewer service that would tie into the existing sewer service via a new sampling manhole. I recommend approval with the following conditions. Wastewater flow, this parcel is within the original sewer area. However, a flow allocation was never assigned to the parcel. Historically, the highest usage for this location was 480 gallons per day, but during the last four years, the facility has used less than 160 gallons per day. Uh, the approved wastewater flow 
uh, limited to the 400 gallons per day. Any future flows in excess of the approved amount are subject to additional approvals. No capacity reserve fee is due for this project. Any future flows in excess of the 480 gallons per day are subject to additional capacity reserve fees. Final plan signed and stamped by a licensed professional engineer submitted to the superintendent uh, for approval prior to the issuance of the permits. Sewer permit is required. A complete application and associated fee shall be submitted to the distance prior to any site work. Installation of the sewer service to be inspected and approved by the district and professionally surveyed record plans, both paper and electronic, to be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman, with the caveats attached. Second. Motion and a second. Any questions or comments? Charlie. Matt, um, just to be clear, um, in one sentence, you indicate that they are going to be servicing the building with a new sewer service and then uh, that they're going to um, connect to the existing sewer service. So um, basically, you're telling me there's going to be a second building sewer, but it's not going to it's not going to connect to the main in the street. It's going to uh, join the existing stub from the street to yeah, the building. Yeah, the, the addition is, uh, is going to be sewered. The, the sewer uh, that's going to, um, the sewer service that's going to, to uh, go with the addition is going run externally outside adjacent to the existing building and, and tie into the existing sewer service prior to leaving the property. Yeah, so no, no, no cut in the street. No cut in the street. Correct. Uh, thank you. And then with regard to the capacity reserve fees, mm -hmm. um, the uh, developer is, is aware of this condition and the future liability if the use in the building goes up. So this isn't something that's going to die with the response to Sebago Technic, but we're sure the owner is going to be realizing that there's a future obligation. Um, I have not had not communicated directly with the owner, but I certainly can. To make okay. Well, I just think when we do a provision like this, <coughs> um, we either want to make a firm recommendation to the representatives of the owner that they actually pass this information on, or that we communicate directly with the owner so that uh, in the future when there's a uh, cost or bill that we're going to send to uh, an exist then existing property owner in the community that they've at least had some forewarning, you know, that uh, we're, we're acting based on the numbers that they gave us, and if their numbers exceed those amounts, that there's a financial liability that runs along, along with that. So just to be sure there's some forewarning that gets passed on. Yeah, I can, what I can do from now on is make sure the... Uh, uh, owner slash developer of the property is included as a CC on the approval letter. Yeah, that would be fine. Other questions? None. All in favor of approval? All, all in favor, one abstention. McSorley. And the next item under new business is the 12 month, month budget summary. 12 month budget summary is included in your packet. The year end budget summary shows expenditures of $3,017,086.50, while $3,108,937 had been budgeted. I recommend approval. Motion, Motion to, approve. to approve. Second, then. Um. <laughs> you got that right? Okay. All right. Any questions? None. All in favor of approval? None opposed. And the added item to the agenda under new business is the key total treasury. As part of her duties as office manager, Wendy Frazier requires access to the district's key total treasury <coughs> account, similar to the access both Sandy and I currently have. This access will allow Wendy the ability to review account information, tweet statements, and transfer funds between district accounts, and provide her access to, to the ACH system. I recommend approval to provide Wendy Frazier access to the district's key total treasury account. So moved. Seconded. 
Any question about that item? I do. Yes. Sure. Um, when uh, when a transfer is made, uh, is there confirmation notice that comes back to you as the superintendent on any transactions that are made? So there's at least some form of check on. No offense, Wendy. I'm just talking about internal control for how this how this uh, transaction would happen. By um, uh, our, our accountants that we do our annual review require us require the uh, transaction to be to have my signature on it. So every month, uh, whenever it occurs, it occurs with my knowledge. Okay. So so if Wendy has to move money, mm -hmm. you have to sign a document Correct. to allow that to happen. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? All in favor of approval? None opposed. Next, we'll be moving on to public comments. However, we have no public this evening. So we'll move to trustee comments. And I'll start down on my right. Charlie? Um, just want to uh, commend the superintendent and staff for their work on resolving the cross connection issue with the DEP and instituting that protocol. I think that was uh, uh, a great step to take and uh, will minimize the potential for future instances of this happening. Uh, I don't think it's a very common occurrence, uh, but uh, it's nice to have something hard in place to minimize the potential for that in the future. And. Uh, And I think that was my only comment. So, thanks, Steve. Thank you, Charlie. Rob? Uh, once again, I want to give kudos to staff, uh, especially who was mentioned here. Uh, Paul was in there, Glenn was in there, Carl was in there. I know they all do a great job, and uh, we commend them for their hard work and dedication. It's also good to see the DEP is recommending our staff to assist others. Uh, that's very nice to know that uh, our staff has thought so highly. Um, and uh, we have a holiday coming up, don't we? Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say Groundhog's Day. There is a February holiday, isn't there? I'd like to thank uh, Dave and the staff. Uh, the budget come in uh, in excess of $90,000 under, uh, huh? under projected. Like and uh, also, you know, pass on the kudos from two gentlemen to my right. All right. Ben. Oh, I'll pass tonight. No comments from Ben. No. Nick. Um, I may sound like I'm repeating myself, but kudos to Dave and the staff. Uh, let's see, Carl and Paul for recognizing the, um, oh, the uh, thank you, the cavitation on the impellers and for addressing that stuff for Glenn being recognized, A, for being a, a valid resource for other plants to consult with, and B, for going and helping OOB. I appreciate that. Um, Glenn's a great guy. He's a smart guy, knows his stuff, and uh, it's nice to be recognized like that. Kudos to you, Dave, for uh, another great year, um, especially going to the WIPES press conference. That's new. and. Um, it's helpful that we're showing a presence there. Um, I guess that's it. Thanks. Thanks, Nick. So well, I'd like to congratulate the superintendent and the <coughs> district on being under budget this year. I think that's a significant accomplishment in these times. Um, and number two, would love to uh, hear about at a future meeting at some, port, uh, some point talking about uh, long-term capital expenditure projections and uh, infrastructure renewals so that we can think about sort of a long-term rate picture. Any other comments? Uh, I'll echo those comments. Uh, thank you very much, Dave, and the staff for uh, everything you do and coming in under budget again this year and uh, look forward to another full year and uh, Got our budget all approved, and uh, hopefully we can do it again. <laughs> aye, aye. Thank you. And with that, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. All in favor? And we're adjourned. <laughs>